Hey, what's going on, guys? Gen Dit Commando here, and today, troops, we're going to be reacting to Naval Special Warfare Training, Water Competency Training Curriculum. It's the US military on this one, so I'm looking forward to getting amongst it, guys. All right, and um, getting to uh, showcase some of our um, American content to you all. So, before we get into it, you know what to do, guys. Please smash that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. It really does help us out. And join the Discord. Link is in the description, troops. But other than that, have a fantastic time on this video. Really looking forward to it. Let's go. I'm yeah, Commander Master Chief Steph Bass. I would like to discuss how the Naval Special Warfare Center trains future SEALs in and around the water. What are right, so Navy SEALs, guys. As bad as they get in terms of, you know, how good they can get, if that makes any sense, you know. These guys are badass. Yeah, it goes without saying. Navy SEALs, one of the hardest jobs on the planet. Competency is a core skill for Navy SEALs. And in this video, you'll see some examples of our training curriculum. It does not matter what your swimming proficiency is when you get here, whether you've never seen the ocean or you're an Olympic Yeah, so that's a very similar standard in terms of what is required before you even start as the Royal Marines Commandos, which I was formerly a part of, guys, if you don't already know. And you didn't have to be the world's greatest swimmer. You know, you didn't have to be like a fish or anything like that, but... Yeah, you had to be able to jump off a diving board and swim confidently, breaststroke, um, about 50 metres, yeah. And you had to be confident. It was a pass or fail thing before you even started commando training, guys. And from having done a battle swim test, you know, I can tell you there's, there's a definite reason for that, okay, that you need to be able to at least swim. Um, these guys, I've seen a few snippets. It looks pretty hard, their training, in terms of what they're required to do, okay. They practice drowning and stuff, so... Yeah, I'm going to expect some pretty tough training in this video, troops. Swimmer, you need to be prepared to execute some of the world's most dangerous missions in unforgiving environments against hostile forces. Keep in mind that if you're someone who wants to be a Navy SEAL today, you're training... I mean, look at that. They've got the hands behind the backs, the floating, the swimming. It's just basically, you know, <laughs> trying not to drown, really. And you see some of these guys passing out in the water. It's, it's hardcore troops, okay? It's hardcore, man. I remember doing a battle swim test in America when I was in 29 Palms with the U.S. Marines, and the way they do things was very different to us as well, okay? It's uh, pretty robust. Training will be different. You should be training for the physical screening test, not for basic underwater demolition SEAL training. Take it one step at a time. What I'm about to show you is part of a training process that we teach step-by-step -step to new students. You can find out more about the physical screening test and how to train for it on our public website, sealswick.com. Let me begin by explaining how and why we conduct this training. Outline our approach to safety and professional standards. There are three main points I want you to remember from this video. We take a progressive approach to water competency. <laughs> yeah, and the military has a, you know, they'll say it's progressive, but I'm telling you, it'll be, it'll be pretty tough still. Yeah, it, there's definite progression within training. You're not just going to get thrown in at the deep end, so to say, pardon the pun. But um, it's it doesn't mean to say it's easy either, all right? I, I struggled with swimming, and I was a pretty good swimmer in the Royal Marines. I thought, wow, I thought I was a good swimmer. I'm, I'm struggling with this. So although it's progressive, yeah, it's, it's uphill still, guys, all right? It's steadily progressive, but the progressive is uphill. It's not just steadily progressive and it's flat. The learning curve is big 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 guys we build up the student confidence and comfort in the water as training increases in complexity it's a carefully planned crawl walk run curriculum every evolution features safety protocols including experience supervision medical response and an appropriate instructor to student ratio if you want to be a seal someday you should not be conducting any risky training on your own yeah, that's a fair one, guys. It's um, If you're going to do anything dangerous, wait until you get into the job. There's no point in doing it beforehand and breaking yourself, you know. I wished I'd learned that before I joined Royal Marines. I used to run with so much weight on my back. I used to run in boots thinking that it's going to harden my feet up. It never did, all right? And run with weight on my back just, you know, progressed my knee injuries and stuff. And my knees are worn out and I'm only in my 30s. It's... um. Yeah, I wish I'd listened to this kind of advice before I joined the Marines myself, guys. All of our aquatic skills are ultimately put to the test in real-world scenarios. 
There isn't a water competency evolution in our curriculum that does not contribute to skills used in feet wet missions. This is where all of our training is critical to mission success and the safe return. That is cool. Jumping out of planes, guys. It is as, as good as it gets, I think, in the military. Of our team. The training begins after a prospective SEAL student leaves recruit training. The recruit will attend Naval Special Warfare Preparatory School for two months of basic swimming in a pool to work with Finn. Wow, two months. That's a long time, guys. I know these guys are obviously specialists within the sea, but two months, you know, based on swimming. Now we're talking, you know, this is similar territory to the special boat service in the uh, United Kingdom, which, you know, 99% of SBS operators are former Royal Marines, basically because of the uh, the water element. Okay, guys, the maritime side of things. And build up endurance until they pass the water competency exit standard, which is a 1,000 meter swim with fins in 20 minutes or less. When they arrive here at the center for orientation, they continue to work in the pool, but also swim in the ocean. Examples of this include conditioning swims up to two miles in San Diego Bay. And San Diego Bay. I've got some stories about San Diego Bay. And uh, yeah, that was uh, maybe for another video, guys. When I visited America um, and I was working with the U.S. Marines, we had a bit of downtime for a couple of weeks. We um, got a Mustang. We drove all over the place, went up to Vegas, went up to San Fran. Went to San Diego, and uh, yeah, it was one of the best times of my life, guys. I love, I love you all from San Diego. You were so welcoming for us all. It was, uh, it was fantastic, guys. Just past the surf line, right off our beach here at Buds. All of this is to build them up for first phase, where they will conduct pool evolution, like knot time, a 50 meter underwater swim, and drown proofing. Here is one of our Buds instructors to explain more about drown proofing. Drown proofing, like many of our evolutions, has a crawl, walk, run progression to it. First, we'll tie their feet. Then we tie their hands. Then we... <laughs> it doesn't even sound right, does it? First, we'll tie their feet, then their hands. I mean, this sounds insane, guys. But, you know, these guys are going to be doing one of the hardest jobs on the planet. That's what is required. That's what they have to do, guys. It's as simple as that. And um, everyone who's ever passed this course knows it ain't easily earned, all right? It isn't easily earned. Tie both feet and hands and ask them to perform a series of tasks in the water such as bobbing, floating, traveling, mass retrieval, and flips. In the drown proofing evolution, there are several layers of safety. First, in the water, we have one to five instructor to student ratio. Each instructor... Yeah, one to five, it's probably about the same as what it was in the, in the Royal Marines. So it, it, it's dangerous, guys, but it's... The safety provisions in there. I mean, no one's going to die in that pool, all right? You know, we're going to. There's going to be safety provisions in place. I mean, we're talking about the U.S. Navy SEALs for Christ's sake. It's uh, the, the 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 some of the best operators on the planet. Fact. Doctor is observing five students to make sure that they are confident and competent in the water. Above the water, we have safety observers. We have a dive medical officer, corpsman equipped with life-saving equipment, and an emergency vehicle ready to take a student in distress to the nearest medical facility. Evolutions such as drown proofing have very real world applications in many levels. The most obvious is if you find yourself in a real world mission and you're tied up in line, bound up in equipment or kelp, it gives you the confidence to know that you've been in a situation like that before and you can resolve it and come home alive. Yeah, that's a very fair point. So they're doing everything that can fit into a, a real world situation, troops. And there's no point of doing on the job training like what they're doing there and not being able to operate in a real situation all right your training is irrelevant if you can't operate in a real situation and unless the train's as real as it gets which these guys are you know training for then you're not going to be competent at all but um it goes without saying those who pass this course will be competent at the end that's for sure our training methods are developed over decades of lessons learned and best practices operational risk management procedures are briefed and practice. Students are empowered to call for a training timeout if needed to address any safety concerns. Safety is number one. So once again, if you want to be a SEAL someday, you should not conduct risky evolutions. Just focus on passing the physical screening test. No one expects you to swim 50 meters underwater as soon as you arrive. And we certainly do not want you to conduct drown proofing on your own. Every evolution that we conduct in the water at BUDS can be applied to a real world mission. Those progress oh, look at that. That is awesome. That is the stuff you want to join the military for. Launching from a submarine. Unbelievable troops. 
Endurance of long distance swims. Give us the endurance to swim to an objective from the sea, carrying a 60 pound ruck and weapons through harsh surf, riptide. That's insane, guys. This actually, people actually do this stuff. Insane. Over the beach into enemy territory. Whether it's parachuting into rough seas in the middle of the night or climbing into a helicopter from a boat in unsteady conditions, every SEAL has the confidence and skill of having trained at BUDS to respond to an adverse sea conditions underwater or over the water while achieving the mission objective. Basic through advanced aquatic skills learned at the Naval Special Warfare Center form the heart of our sea warrior skill set. Our supreme competency in the water is what distinguishes us from other special operations forces as the maritime component of the United States Special Operations Command. Yeah, and a very, very important component there are indeed, guys. And uh, that concludes our video, actually, troops. And I really, really enjoyed it. I love, you know, doing these videos on American uh, the military because, you know, at the end of the day, we're brothers in arms and uh, I've got mad respect for anyone who served in the U.S. military. Um, and I really do mean that, okay? I've worked alongside you guys. I know how you operate. I've got a special um, love and close heart for the U.S. Marines because I was obviously a Royal Marine myself in the United Kingdom. So, um, yeah, respect to each and every one of you guys. If you are currently serving in the U.S. military, I respect you. Thank you for your service. And if you're serving in any other part of the military troops, thank you for your service as well, okay? And um, if you want to chat to me, join the Discord, all right? We've got a fantastic community of um, non-military and ex-military, current serving military on there it's fantastic guys link will be in the description we've got merchandise below as well if you want to have a look at that we've got a new commando mug which is just released aiming to get some more stuff out of you very very soon if you've donated on the video or anything so far on via paypal i just want to say thank you very much guys it really is appreciated if you want to support the channel in a different way we um you know we have a twitch stream that goes live every single night where we play different games and stuff on there we've got some Good, hardcore, loyal gamers on there. So if you're one of those and you want to see us game, join Twitch. Link is in the description. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one, troops. Thanks very much for stopping by, and I'll see you later. Peace.